when the game becomes boring and you've already tried all the interesting things in it, you start complicating your life by inventing challenges. The trend of the 100 days in the game challenge has been going on for years, and I wouldn't be original if I simply documented my 100 days of survival in Paul World. So, as you've understood from the video title, I decided to make things more challenging for myself. In this video, I'll be surviving 100 days in Paul World, capturing and using only Earth-type pals. When I came up with this challenge, I thought I needed to choose one elemental type to make the game manageable. Yes, of course, you can complete the game without pals altogether, but then in 100 days of survival, the most you'll see is building a house and endlessly gathering stone and wood. So why did I choose Earth-type pals? I based my decision on the most useful skills of pals that players cannot replace, and for this skill, I chose Kindling. Players cannot ignite fires themselves for smelting ingots, and ingots in the game are one of the most frequently used resources. If you immediately thought of fire pals, you won't be able to progress through the game properly with them, as fire pals have limited skills. For example, I won't be able to engage in gardening, which will complicate food acquisition for pals. All other types are also unbalanced in terms of skills. Therefore, I concluded that it would be most comfortable to play the game with Earth-type pals, but there is one difficulty here. Namely, that particular skill, Kindling, is only possessed by one pal, Reptiro, and you can catch it at a later stage of the game in a location with a volcano or buy it from a pal seller, but this method depends on chance, so we can't rely on it. You can't catch Reptiro with regular spheres, so we need those spheres that require the same steel ingots for crafting, which can be farmed from the bushy pal. There was a plan to breed Reptiro from an egg, but there is no combination of pals to cross two lower-level Earth pals. But in the end, I remembered about the chests scattered throughout the world, and that's where we can find gigaspheres and hyperspheres, which we will focus on when we arrive on the volcano island. By the way, there are no Earth-type flying pals, so I'll have to travel everywhere on land for all 100 days. Well, the introduction turned out to be lengthy, but the video will be even longer and more interesting. The first day began with the most challenging task, creating the world and character, as well as coming up with names for them. I played around with the parameters for a bit, and then launched the game. After the familiar loading screen, I immediately set out to explore the world and think about where to start. To put it briefly, most of the first day was spent searching for a place for a future base, because I didn't want to relocate from the starting location later on, preferring to start building in a beautiful spot right away. However, not long after setting out, I encountered two Earth-type pals, and I had regular spheres that I obtained from chests and picked up on the ground. So first, I caught Gamas, who was rather useless because he could only plant seeds in garden beds, which wouldn't be needed anytime soon since other pals are required to work with the beds. The next pal, which I will use for mining ore for all 100 days once I tame it, is Rushor. I had to chase and fight him for a bit, but I eventually caught him in a regular sphere. Although I had slightly better spheres, I didn't rush to use them because I won't be able to craft them again anytime soon. By nightfall, I was still running around in search of a suitable base location. And just before nightfall, I crafted armor to keep warm. And then I remembered about the torch, which illuminated my path in the darkness. And so ended the first day of our challenge. The second day was entirely spent searching for a base location. However, it wasn't as simple as it sounds. I was killed multiple times, fleeing from hostile creatures, and it seemed like everything was against me. This was because I ventured into a location that was far beyond my level, but the desire to find a beautiful spot for the base outweighed my fear and pain. I was killed with just a couple of shots. Stones were thrown at me, and by the end of the day, I almost died from an aggressive lizard. But miraculously, I survived and even found two potential base locations. Therefore, I decided to wait until morning to get a better look at the scenery of these places. The third day started off quite unpleasantly, as I was being harassed by hostile creatures. However, my efforts to place the pall box in the new location didn't go in vain, as I managed to do so, and no more unwanted visitors roamed around. I chose an interesting spot for the base, somewhat resembling a valley or field surrounded by mountains, which I find quite romantic. I only just realized that in the tutorial, I need to catch five lamb balls, but it's forbidden to do so because they are of a normal type, and we are only playing with Earth-type pals. This means I won't be able to complete the tutorial and will never learn to play properly. Well, I'll have to tolerate this tutorial window for all 100 days. I decided to complete one of the tasks from the tutorial, placing the first pal at the base, but all of mine were dead. Well, that didn't stop me from still completing this part of the tutorial. Next, 
a major construction project began. That's what I had planned at the beginning. I almost made a mistake and was about to start building a large house with a magnificent view from the third floor, but I quickly came to my senses and decided to start with a simple box for now. When I have more resources, I'll remodel everything much better. As soon as I settled into this corner, I already had visitors, a wandering merchant. I don't need to buy anything from him yet, and I have nothing to sell, as I've only just started developing. The rest of the day I spent on household chores, building the house, setting up workbenches and chests, gathering stone and wood, and crafting a bow. I also set up a bed and went to sleep, thus ended the third day. On the fourth and fifth days, my plan was to focus on exploration. More specifically, I wanted to reach the desert in the center of the map because many Earth-type pals reside there. Along the way, I collected items from the ground, opened chests, defeated pals for resources, and even found a shiny bristla. However, even if I could catch it, I wouldn't do so because that pal is not Earth-type. Somewhere along the journey, the thought occurred to me regarding pal eggs. There's no point in collecting all eggs because if we hatch an egg of another type, non-Earth, we would be breaking the conditions of the challenge since essentially, we're capturing those pals. Therefore, the incubator will only accept Earth-type eggs. Before reaching the desert, I realized I needed more arrows to lower the health of pals, so I manually teleported home and crafted nearly a hundred arrows. I urgently needed a pal with manual labor skill. There is one such pal in the desert, but when I got there, I realized that access was currently closed to me. Firstly, the pals here are of such a level that my bow with arrows barely scratches them, dealing minimal damage while they kill me with three hits. Secondly, I don't have a special heat-resistant suit, so I take damage while in the desert. Nevertheless, I didn't leave empty-handed. In the poacher's cage, I found Dumud. Since he is an Earth-type pal, I freed him, and now we have a pet with a relatively high level. However, this level will be adjusted to match mine. So, as long as the player is at level 6, this Dumud will also be at level 6 until I level up. I also stumbled upon a fight between Dumuds and poachers and wanted to take advantage of it. I waited for the pal's health to drop lower and caught them for experience. On the way home, I was killed again. Returned to collect my belongings, scavenging useless items and chests, and finally returned home to move on to the next day. The sixth day began with the thought that I needed to automate manual work at the base. I decided to go catch more rush whores and gamases to raise my level to at least 15, so I could go catch pals in the desert with manual labor skills. But during my journey, I stumbled upon a cave and decided to enter it to collect items from chests. However, upon entering, I encountered a new Earth-type pal who happened to have the manual labor skill. On this trip into the cave, I caught four fuddlers and opened two chests, which contained some useful items. I also used up all my arrows. As I was leaving the cave, it started to get dark, and I realized that this day was coming to an end. As a final task, I decided to place the new pals at the base and give them their first job at the workbench, as well as build beds for myself. But they decided to sleep on the ground instead. After all, they are Earth-type pals. Well, that means we'll transfer the work to the next day. The seventh day was rather uneventful. In the morning, my pals and I finished making beds for them, crafted some essential items, and by the end of the day, I set arrows to craft. I also caught all 10 gamases for experience. When I set up the quarry for automated stone mining, I pondered on how to do the same with wood, which made me think a bit. The pal with the lowest level that can gather wood is a deer, which inhabits the first reserve, and the only way to get there is by using a serpent terra, which lives in the farthest part of the map, the vast desert. Therefore, I'll have to manually farm wood for a while longer. The eighth day passed very uneventfully. All I did was search for rush ores to catch them for experience and leather. I also farmed various materials like wool or fire organs. Additionally, I visited the village to buy a few arrows and other resources and to sell some extra pals. On the ninth day, I crafted armor suitable for the hot regions to catch pals in the desert. I looted the local chests, caught a new pal, and then something very interesting and unpleasant happened. Just see for yourself. Finally, I managed to get out of this additional challenge from the game, and I went on to catch pals and search for eggs of Earth-type pals. Yes, about the eggs. I had the idea of hatching pals from eggs, but in the desert instead of Earth eggs, there were grass ones everywhere. I caught a couple more pals and went to finish this day. On the 10th and 11th days, I spent the first gathering a large amount of wood for construction, and then I spent two whole days building a house that will most likely be seen until the end of the video. 
I made the house large from the start so that in the future I could expand it with other buildings and everything would look harmonious. However, a couple of interesting events did occur during these days. First, I was attacked by level 1 and 2 pals, which looked quite amusing as they died very quickly. Later, I was attacked again, but this time, it wasn't a raid. Here's a piece of advice for the future. Don't build bases in areas where exploding pals like bees or toucans inhabit. On the morning of the first day, I was attacked by bees, which first killed my pal and then me. Towards the end of the second day, I was attacked again by bees, but I only noticed them when they were already in my house. As a result of their explosions, almost half of my house burned down, which I hadn't even finished building, and two pals died. The next day, unfortunately, I didn't record anything because I forgot to start recording. But I didn't do anything interesting on the twelfth day. Only by midday did I finish building the house. It took me a lot of time, especially constructing the roof. In the second part of the game review, I will definitely mention the roof construction mechanics as a downside of the game. Until morning, I explored caves, opened chests, and caught earth-type pals. The thirteenth day started with a little house reconstruction because I needed to place the pal statue in the right spot. When I noticed that the pal box was slightly crooked relative to the doors, my perfectionism compelled me to break it and place it evenly. However, in those few seconds, unexpected guests arrived, high-level pals whom I couldn't fend off because they were too strong. I had to teleport to another location and return to restart the areas. By the end of the day, I was arranging tables for work and chests around the house, as well as gathering wood for crafting spheres. On the 14th and 15th days, I embarked on a journey to the volcano. Since I had long since unlocked the furnace for smelting ingots, and most of the new items and crafts required iron ingots, I began to think about how to quickly obtain a repti row. After some consideration, I decided to try buying the pals I needed. I wanted repti row for its kindling skill and Ike Theodir Terra for its wood gathering ability. I attempted to buy a deer from the Black Marketeer. So, I took resources to build a pal box nearby to check his new assortment every day and just teleport to him. I headed towards the cave where I could find it. On my way, I discovered a fascinating feature of the Dire Hal Pal. If you kill another pal near these wolves, they will approach the corpse and start eating it. Realistic mechanics, albeit eerie. Upon reaching the merchant, I found that he didn't have the pals I needed. So, I exited the cave and planned to build a pal box. However, I forgot that my main pal box was of insufficient level to construct another one. I'll deal with this another time. Later, nearing the volcano, I encountered another black marketeer, but he didn't have what I needed either. By the end of the 14th day, I hadn't reached the island with the volcano, so I headed home to rest. At the start of the 15th day, I was on the island. My task now was to reach the village where the trader sells pals exclusive to this island, including Reptiro, but I didn't know the price yet. On the way, I opened chests and found several hyperspheres. I also encountered my first wild Reptiro, but I couldn't do anything with it yet since my bow and pals wouldn't penetrate its armor. Getting to the village wasn't easy due to the landscape of the location. Who in their right mind would travel on foot through such late locations without a flying pal? I hadn't done that before either, but I eventually found a way to cross to the other side of the island, where I met the fisherman's point. Of course, I immediately went to the pal trader, and you won't believe it, but he was selling the repti row I needed. After that, I pondered which would be easier, catching repti row or saving up money to buy it. Another local trader was selling a fire crossbow and makeshift handgun, which were also not cheap, but with their help, I could easily lower repti row's health if I wanted to catch it. I wandered around a bit more, opening chests and almost dying. When I returned home, I noticed that something was wrong with the pals at the base. This wasn't the first time they just froze in one place and started starving. I adjusted the layout of the buildings a bit, and after sleeping, they seemed to move again. But I'm not sure if the problem is solved permanently. Day 16 began with clearing the forest, because I needed a lot of wood for various crafts. Among other things, I built a pal gear workbench, crafted a three-shot bow, and a saddle for rush ore. But there's no need for me to ride it at the moment, since it's a good pal for manual ore mining. But I don't currently need metal or other minerals, and I have no shortage of stone. I headed to the volcano islands to find caves and open chests for gold coins. However, I was first killed by fire and my own torch, and then it took me a while to reach my death location. When I arrived at the Anubis statue, I thought there would be a chest, but I only found wood with attacks for pals. Returning to the base, I saw that my pals were stuck in one spot again. Out of desperation, I simply rebuilt the pal box, unsure if it will help. On the 17th day of the trial, I didn't expect much. I was in the Iron Age, 
So the only thing I needed to do was solve the problem with smelting, which meant buying Reptiro. I decided to continue gathering chests and exploring caves, where I knew there were also chests. I teleported to the volcano, found a couple of chests, and ventured into a cave. I collected one chest in the cave and got killed. I rushed back to the cave to retrieve my items and decided to test how much damage I could inflict on Reptiro. That's when I realized that if I had decided to catch it, I would have regretted it deeply. As the day was drawing to a close, I had already resigned myself to the fact that I hadn't accomplished anything significant. But then, I saw something unusual, a battle between two Reptiros. I immediately understood that I needed to take advantage of this and waited for one of them to defeat the other. When it happened, I started throwing hyperspheres at him, and with a 13% chance, I failed to catch him using five red spheres. I had no choice but to try my luck with gigaspheres, but the chance was tiny, and I didn't even hope to catch him. But a miracle happened, and somehow Reptiro became my new pal. Well, this incident saved me about 10 or 15 days, so you'll get to see more content. As for working with the ingots, I'll leave that for the next day. Now that I have access to iron ingots, many new possibilities have opened up for me. First, I mined more iron ore to ensure I had enough for a while. It's strange because I used to hate the endless mining of ore and considered it one of the main drawbacks of the game, but now somehow it was even comfortable to mine these iron deposits. And yes, finally, I can fully utilize rush ore and the saddle on it. Next, I made some improvements to the base, set up new buildings, and my PAL box reached level 9. But that's not enough to build another PAL box. To progress further, I need to be at level 14 to fulfill one of the conditions. And of course, the best way to progress in this game is by catching pals, so I headed to the habitat of Earth Pals and searched for lone ones to catch, as well as freed some from cages. By the end of the 19th day, I unlocked crossbow technology, which will simplify my pal catching and cave expeditions. I also plan to engage in battle with our first boss, but that will be on the next day. Now I need to address the final question for comfortable gameplay, automatic wood harvesting. We have four pals capable of doing this, Ike Thyardir Terra, Robin Quill Terra, Menesting, and Warsect. I could either wait for one of these pals to appear for sale at the Black Marketeer, or try to catch Warsect, who can be found as a boss at the level 30 Sanctuary. But now that I finally crafted a crossbow and defeated my first boss in the cave, followed by a surface boss, who awarded me with points of ancient technology research, which I used to research the incubator and placed my only earth egg in it, from which Hang Yu hatched. Near the cave's Black Marketeer, I built a pal box to check his new assortment every day. Over the next couple of days, I embarked on journeys around the world, defeated bosses, explored caves, farmed resources from pals, and improved the base by constructing new buildings. From day 23 to 26, I harvested wood, caught pals, explored caves, defeated bosses, and checked the Black Marketeer's new assortment every morning. I must say, he didn't have any of the pals I needed for sale. I encountered a lucky Doomid, which I couldn't catch, and it would take too long to defeat, so I ignored it. I also encountered Lucky Swee and Lucky Daydream in a cave. Interestingly, in this cave, there was a bug where the boss room was empty, and the entrance to the chests and the exit portal was open. It's unfortunate because I venture into caves to defeat bosses for experience. Another interesting moment occurred in the desert when I ran near Anubis. He noticed me, but I thought I had managed to evade him and that he was no longer following me. However, a little later, Anubis unexpectedly decided to greet me personally. When I was running for my items, I forgot that I didn't have a glider and almost died after jumping off a cliff. That would have been the stupidest death. I ended these days with a long walk home with almost three tons of iron in my pockets. I'll need a lot of iron ingots soon. On day 27, I ventured into the vast desert. I remembered another opportunity to acquire a pal with woodcutting skills, as well as the ability to swim. In the middle of the desert, there's a settlement with a pal trader who lives in the same desert. So, we'll try to use the same tactic we wanted to use to obtain Repti Row initially. In this desert, I nearly died because night fell, and it gets very cold in the desert at night, and I didn't have suitable cold weather gear with me. But just seconds before the end of the day, I managed to reach the teleporter. I also rearranged the storage in the house a bit, installed upgraded chests, and sorted out the resources. And of course, I didn't forget to check the new assortment of the Black Market Pal Trader. On the morning of day 29, I headed towards the settlement in the vast desert. Along the way, I narrowly escaped death from aggressive wild pails and managed to gather a few chests. Upon reaching the settlement, I immediately checked the assortment of the traders. One of them was selling a musket, but I needed the money for a more important purchase. Another trader was offering two Serpent Terra. 
but since the saddle for them unlocks at level 24, we wouldn't be able to swim on them immediately after purchase, so I decided to wait for more needed pails. After exploring the world, investigating caves, and defeating bosses for experience, I returned to the trader the next day and bought a Robin Quiltera. Finally, we have an earth pail with woodcutting skills. It cost much less than I thought, which is very good. Back at the base, I assigned some tasks to the new pail, but my pets got stuck in place again. I rebuilt the pal box again, but a bit further away because I suspect they get stuck due to the stone generated nearby. We'll see if I'm right. Then, I spent a lot of time redesigning the interior of the house and decorating it with various items like vines or decorative furniture. By the end of day 31, I visited the Black Marketeer, and he had a war sect for sale. Of course I bought it, and now we have a new earth pail, which is very useful. Now my task is to reach level 24 and 25 to saddle two pails for travel on water and land. So the next few days will be repetitive, as I'll be killing all the bosses and saving up money to buy the necessary pails. I decided to start preparing for the battle with the first storyline boss. After reviewing my blueprints, I crafted upgraded armor, gathered my strongest pails from the base, and headed to the first tower, Zoe. Everything turned out to be too easy. Grizzbolt didn't even damage me, not even once did he harm my shield, and my pet Robin Quill didn't even lose half of its health. Well, now the tutorial panel will irritate me a little less. For defeating the boss, I received the most important thing, experience which is needed more than anything else. With the restriction of using pails of only one element, it's very difficult to level up because there are no pails that can be caught for experience. And what's the point of catching all pails 10 times over? Additionally, I started killing more powerful bosses on the surface of the world and bought a Serpent Terra. Now all I need is to buy that Earth Deer. Or more likely, I'll level up to 24 and make a saddle for the Serpent to paddle to the island. On the 34th day, I caught all the pails available to me in the small desert 10 times each. I also defeated another boss among the stronger ones and encountered Lucky Direhowl, who gave me a bit more experience. Over the course of the next four days, I reached level 20 and constructed a weapon workbench where I crafted a rare handgun using blueprints I had found in chests. This required gathering a significant amount of iron and investing a lot of time to speed up the process. Whenever I left the base, my pails would glitch and stop working, so I had to manually handle everything. Even though I wasn't supposed to unlock the handgun and its bullets in the technology tree soon, I managed to buy some bullets from a trader near the volcano. After testing the handgun, I realized I wouldn't be using it for now. The bullets were expensive, and I needed money. Besides, it dealt little damage for the amount of ammo it consumed. Upon reaching level 21, I unlocked the ability to craft a musket, gunpowder, and musket balls. Of course, I took advantage of this, and now had a reliable, powerful weapon that I could easily supply with ammunition. I tested it out, and while it dealt more damage than the crossbow, its slow reload increased my frustration. And now, I could also craft gigaspheres, but I currently had no one to catch. My next goal is to reach level 24. During the following days, I repeated the same routine. I endlessly killed bosses to level up. I collected 115 ancient civilization parts from these bosses, along with a bunch of junk that I sold for 41,000 gold. I'm almost at the next stage of the trial. I spent several more days killing bosses, which I had already grown tired of. But eventually, I reached level 24, and I could finally move on to something new in this trial. I immediately researched saddle technology and set out to craft it. When it came time to test Serpent Terra in swimming, I was very surprised and disappointed. It turned out that Serpent Terra was not a very resilient swimmer, unlike its aquatic counterpart, Serpent. As I started swimming on the PAL, its stamina quickly began to deplete. I doubted whether it was worth trying to swim to the island in such conditions, so I hesitated on the shore, trying to figure out what to do. In the end, I found one way. If we put the PAL into sphere mode, its stamina won't recover unless it's on the ground. But if we ride the PAL, the player's stamina recovers very quickly. So I decided to swim to the island myself and only sit on the PAL when my stamina was running out. But in the end, I managed to swim to the island without resorting to these manipulations. The combined stamina of the player and Serpent Terra was enough for me. Here is the very island that was the main goal after catching Reptiro. I was immediately greeted by the pal I came here for, Ikthir Deer Terra. Of course, I spent the whole day on this island, catching all the deer in a row and opening chests. After catching 10 specimens, I had nothing else to do here. Next, I decided to check the traders in the settlements, and something awkward happened. I accidentally pressed the attack button and killed the trader. It was only a few seconds before all the accusations were dropped from me. 
Well, I think everyone understood that I accidentally killed this person. Then I bought another Repti Row, because it's the next pal I want to fulfill my plan for catching them. A little later, I returned to the most boring activity, namely killing bosses for experience farming. I urgently need level 25 to unlock the possibility of crafting a saddle for Ike Theodir Terra. When I achieved my goal, I hurried home to quickly make this saddle, and finally, my main goal was achieved. Now I have a pal for transportation. Even though it's a flying pal, I can now move faster, especially since the pal has a double jump. Now I can explore the world with much more comfort. Here's half of the trial gone by, and I've done all the standard things for a regular game. That is, I have all the pawls with the necessary and important working skills. I have strong pawls for battles, pawls for moving on water and land. There's a base, equipment like armor and weapons for a more or less comfortable game, and so on. So what now? Essentially, we set our own goals and achieve them. So I decided to catch all the Earth Pauls 10 times. Well, maybe not all of them. I doubt I'll ever catch or kill Anubis, but that's not the point. I'll continue to develop until the end of the trial to catch the remaining Pauls. More precisely, I need these Pauls. Serpent Terra, Robin Quill Terra, Repti Ro, Ice Repti Ro, War Sect, Menesting. Anubis is not on this list because I won't be able to reach him. As you can understand, there are only six Pauls left on which I can gain experience until a certain point. So each level up will be very difficult for me and I'll continue to kill bosses. And I started by deciding to catch all the war sex, but I won't swim to the second island. I'll just catch him every hour in the sanctuary where the boss of this kind sits. Since I have a fire pawl, Reptiro, I easily defeated and caught it. Earlier we bought it from a trader so there are still eight left. I also started killing other stronger bosses. And since I already have a riding pawl, I decided to start exploring the world and went to the volcano to catch 10 Reptiro. I found one at the beginning and he almost killed me, but I still managed to honestly catch the first Reptiro. So I caught the first one after a fight with two such pawls and bought the second one. However, a little later, I died because I saw a path that looked like I could walk on it, but I was killed by lava, which I didn't even touch. Later, I found a bug with the landscape. I found it amusing because this place in the ground looked like a garage for parking poles. A few meters away were the same bugs, and I wanted to show them closer, but fell through and almost died again. I barely got out of this trap and went on to walk around the volcano. A few minutes later, I died again from jumping over the lava, and I really hated this location. I spent two fireproof jackets and had to craft a new one to retrieve the previous two. I didn't do anything else useful, got to a new teleportation point, and left this place. Although I need to catch Reptiro, at the moment I'll leave the volcano aside. Next, I decided to explore the area near the house and found a cave with a level 28 boss. Of course, I killed him and moved on. Then I made some improvements to the base. Now it's level 13, and you can put the same number of paws on one base simultaneously. To further upgrade the base, I need to reach level 27. It's time to focus on the paws. So I went to explore the desert, where two needed paws live. I tried to catch them whenever I found them, but sometimes they appeared in a group, which made it difficult to catch them. I also found a paw trader in the cave, but he didn't have anything interesting. Along the way, I opened chests, and when I was almost at the new teleportation point, something killed me with one blow. I didn't even have time to react and start recording. While running for the items, I almost died again, but still managed to escape from the desert. Continuing my visits to the Warsec Sanctuary, this time I reached level 26 because of it. I also bought another Warsec from the Paul Trader in the desert. I decided to catch all the robins, but I was interrupted by Takatakos, who decided to help the Wild Paul. At first, they tried to explode me, and then unexpectedly, I got hit in the face by another one who wasn't even looking. But my last sphere thrown at Robin Quill was victorious, and I caught him. This caused a glitch, and after simultaneous player death and Paul capture, the result window didn't disappear for some time. I reached the fourth tower of the story bosses, but I'm unlikely to even attempt to kill it, let alone talk about winning. This boss is definitely not suitable for this playthrough. I encountered Lucky Tokotoko, but of course I can't do anything to him because he's stronger than the bosses. The situation with simultaneous death and capture repeated itself. This time, Suzaku decided to infuriate me. Now I hate the desert more than the volcano. There's always someone interfering in the battle here. Either wild paws interfere in the fight, or poachers with their grenade launchers or machine guns. Nevertheless, this was the last Robin Quill Terra. It was time to catch Surf and Terrace again, and once again, I had to suffer in this desert. First, my riding deer was killed by poachers, and they nearly killed me too. Then, I encountered three paws at once and could only catch one. 
After finishing catching 10 serpents, I immediately headed to the volcano to catch the next pauls on the list, namely Reptiro. It was more difficult to catch them with Giga Spheres than the pauls from the desert, so I ended up using more spheres. I decided to explore the closed part of the map and headed towards the boss Fenglope. First, I encountered a bug that allowed me to see the underwater world of Pal World because I simply fell underwater and could walk on the lake bed. Then, when I entered the cave to face the boss, I encountered another bug. Fenglope wasn't in the cave, and his health, which was still displayed at the top of the screen, was 80% lower than it should have been. I simply left the cave because there was nothing for me to do there. I killed another boss and reached level 27. I unlocked the technology for crafting new spheres and thought I would finally be able to make hyperspheres and simplify catching Reptiros. I built the sphere assembly line, made cement, a lot of iron ingots, and set 20 new spheres to craft. After some time, when I went to collect the finished spheres, I saw only 0 out of 20, and I noticed a red message stating that this device required electricity to function. And as we know, there is no Earth Paul with the ability to charge the base. I'll have to use only yellow spheres for the rest of the playthrough. I made over 100 Giga Spheres and went to Mount Obsidian to achieve my goal of catching Repti Rose. I decided to explore the new winter territory at the top of the mountain near the base. On the way, I saw a cave and decided to quickly defeat the boss, but he quickly defeated me. I returned and eventually defeated the cave boss. I climbed up to the snow, activated the teleporter, and returned home to prepare for the battle with the boss. I decided to take five Reptiros into my team because they are fire type. The battle took a long time because Reptiros are not combat pauls and their attacks are slow. Not to mention my slow musket, and I often miss the boss. Overall, we defeated the boss, but it was a bit difficult, and less than half a minute remained until the end of the battle. If I decide to defeat the third boss, I'll need better preparation. Next, I decided to sail to the second closed island to catch Warsecs and Menestings, but by the end of the day, I only encountered one Warsect, but it was level 43, and I couldn't catch it with my Giga Spheres. Later, I didn't notice when PIDF approached, and I had to run from the island. Before the next day began, I visited the Paul Trader and bought a Warsect from him, then went to the boss and caught another war sect. Remember I said I wouldn't even mention Anubis in this playthrough because we wouldn't kill him anyway? I knew that Anubis could be hatched from an egg, but I didn't think there were two Earth Pauls for this. But then I remembered that there are many variations of parents for Anubis's egg. It turned out that we have a total of three methods that meet the conditions of the trial to obtain Anubis's egg. I chose the method involving Ike Theodir Terra and Repti Rochrist. This method can also simplify obtaining 10 Menestings, but we'll have to catch at least one to breed with Repti Rochrist. In short, my next goal is to catch Repti Rochrist, maybe even more than one. So I sailed to explore the new huge island, where a large part of the location is covered in snow. After running around the snowy mountains for a while, I decided to check the exact location of Repti Rochrist and entered my first world. I remembered that this ice turtle has no surface spawn points. It can only be found in caves in that biome with icy mountains. When I returned to this world, I somehow found myself trapped in a rock. After hopping around a bit, I managed to escape the trap. These bugs are really annoying, but I seem to have gotten used to them. I entered the nearest cave and started running, opening chests and searching for the desired Paul. I hoped to encounter one at least level 40, but I wasn't sure what the minimum level for Repti Rochrist could be. Towards the end of the cave, I encountered the desired pet, and the battle began. It turned out to be very weak, just as I mentioned before that the regular Reptiro attacks very slowly because it's not a combat paul. The ice version is no different. When the health of the wild Reptiro Crist dropped to a minimum, I tried to catch it with three hyperspheres, but with an 8% chance, all three spheres failed to work. However, when I threw a Giga Sphere, this peculiar turtle decided to be caught immediately with a 2% chance. It's quite amusing when you can't catch a Paul with a 70% catch rate with 10 spheres, but you catch a high-level Paul with a 2% chance with the first sphere. I returned home and built two breeding farms. The next step is preparing cakes for breeding. I need eggs and milk because I already had honey and other ingredients. First, I went to kill chickens for eggs. And when I started milking cows, I remembered that I could buy these resources from a certain trader. And I was right. In the very first settlement, the trader sells eggs and milk, but unfortunately, there's no honey. So, I didn't stock up on these ingredients yet because they spoil, and instead, I went to gather more honey because I want to get 10 Anubis eggs at once. I collected almost 100 units of honey. Of course, we won't need that much, but I gathered extra just in case. Then, I calculated that we would need about 25 cakes and bought eggs and milk in the required quantities. All my money went to these ingredients. 
I gathered flour from the mill and set nine cakes to bake. However, I couldn't get my repti row to cook them. I had to rebuild the cauldron for cooking in another place, and that helped. By the way, I encountered an unpleasant bug. When I reached level 28 and explored new constructions, my interface glitched, and it constantly showed that I had new constructions at the bottom. Even though I scrolled through all the buildings in the menu several times, it still indicated that I had something new. Relogging into the game didn't help at all, and it really annoyed me. It was time to introduce Reptirochrist and Eichthardir. I placed them in a special breeding area, and to my surprise, the breeding process, or rather the egg acquisition gauge, started filling up even without the necessary cake. It was very strange, but a little later, the first cake was prepared, and I still put it in the chest just in case. I built two incubators, but I'll need to build more later as my time is limited, and each egg takes a whole hour to hatch. There's just a little left, and I could already gather the first huge earth egg of Anubis. I immediately put it in the incubator and just had to wait. I put a few more cakes in the chest and went back to the winter biome to catch another Reptirochrist, but this time I needed a male. At first I only encountered females, but then I found the male I needed, but he was level 44. I started fighting him, but some dumb NPCs approached me and started to interfere. However, they eventually turned their attention to the wild Reptirochrist and reduced its health to a minimum. But when I tried to catch it, almost all of my gigaspheres started bouncing off it. As a result, the Reptirochrist died, and before that, my Reptiro also died. When I tried to escape, my stamina ran out at the wrong time, and I couldn't make a jump to get out of the room, and I died too. Returning to the base against my will, I saw that the pair didn't like each other, and Eichtheardir decided to drown. But I brought it back because I needed their eggs. I set even more cakes to prepare, and went to make another attempt to catch the ice turtle. This attempt was very fast, so I didn't even understand how I was killed. My health dropped to zero in a second. I thought that Reptirochrist's attacks couldn't kill me with one hit, but I was mistaken, or it was a bug, or just a powerful attack. I returned to the base again, and took the second Anubis egg, also putting it in the incubator. The third attempt was the most unsuccessful. First, I found a male Reptirochrist at level 43, but he accidentally hit other wild pals nearby, and they attacked him. I decided to step back for now, thinking that the Reptirochrist would defeat two Lunarices, but they still quickly reduced his health to a minimum, and I threw a Giga Sphere at him, which for some reason bounced off him, and the Reptirochrist died. And a few seconds later the game crashed, and the recording broke but later it was possible to restore it. I picked up another Anubis egg and wanted to put it in the incubator, but before that, I needed to build many more incubators, although I may have gone a bit overboard with the number of constructions. Returning to the main task at the moment, catching the Repti Rochrist, and immediately after entering the cave, I met this level 42 male. I thought I was finally lucky, but of course I was very wrong. A wild Moraith attacked me, and I decided to first kill it so it wouldn't interfere with catching the Repti Ro. I led the wild one a bit further away and almost killed it, but an ice Repti Ro approached from behind and killed me, and I didn't even see it because I was behind a rock. Then I ran around the cave for a very long time in search of the male I needed. But I encountered all sorts of pals except for the Reptiro Christ, and if I did encounter them, they were only females. But in the end, a miracle happened, and I found the one I needed, and there was no one around to interfere. After a long and tedious battle, I finally reached the stage of catching the Reptiro, and I didn't spend too many spheres, considering that the catching chance was only 2%. I returned to the base and immediately put two Repti Row Christ in one pen because I don't want to catch more of them. I'll have to get them through eggs. But I still need two Repti Row Christ of different genders to put them in separate pens. Because I'll mate one Repti Row with Eichtheardir Terra, and the other needs to be paired with Menesting, whom I'm going to catch now. But before that, I hatched an Anubis egg, and now we have that very pal, which I recently considered unattainable for this trial. He has good passive skills for working at the base, but I would still like to get Anubis for combat. I waited for the first ice egg to appear and put it in the incubator. And now, it's time to hunt for Menesting. Last time, when I was in the second wildlife sanctuary, I didn't encounter a single scorpion, so I prepared for a long search. But the difficulties that later befell me, I wasn't prepared for them. I spent a lot of time circling the island, and in the end I found that very Menesting, and he was also level 41. I thought I was finally lucky, but of course it couldn't be. While I was fighting Menesting, a Wumpo Botan approached me, and when I tried to get away from it because I managed to escape to the other end of the island, I returned to the scorpion, but of course it was a mistake because this green panda still killed me. Returning to the base against my will, I hatched another Anubis egg, and his passive skills were bad. When I returned to the island for my things, I almost immediately found another level 41 Menesting, and again, I mistakenly thought I was very lucky. 
When I tried to start recording, the game crashed again. I hated this game, my laptop, the recording program, and life in general. I had to leave this game for a while because I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. The next day in real life, I turned on the game again and was already on the island. After running around for about 10 minutes, I finally found Menesting, but this time at level 43. I decided not to look for a weaker pal and attacked this one. I was very afraid that no one would approach me again and kill me because there were many wild pals around me. But in the end, the battle went slowly and relatively easily, and when the scorpion had almost no health left, I threw a Gigasphere at it, and with a 2% chance, I caught it on the first try. Apparently, this was my reward for previous sufferings. Now I have all the Earth Pals. All that's left is to get 10 copies of each. I returned to the base and immediately allocated the Pals to the Pens. Now I'll be getting Anubis and Menesting Eggs. I don't really have anything else to do. I just have to wait for the eggs and occasionally catch the Warsect boss. While gathering iron for Ingots because they ran out, the first Menesting Eggs appeared at the base. I also took another Anubis Egg. I put all the eggs in the incubator, and since I have a fire to maintain warmth in the incubator and hatch the eggs faster, it was too hot for the Menesting and Reptiro Crist eggs, so their timers for hatching were longer. But when I hatch almost all the Anubis, I'll remove the fire. After another trip for iron, I returned to the base and took several more eggs. The cakes started running out, so I stocked up on regular eggs and milk and built another cauldron to make cakes faster because the pals reproduce faster than the cakes are made. While waiting, I decided to run through the bosses that I hadn't killed yet for the experience. I decided to stand near the pals for a bit to collect the last Anubis eggs. And a little later, I collected the last scorpion eggs, but then it turned out that one was even unnecessary. When I placed all the eggs on standby, I began to mate two Repti Rokrist. If someone asks why I don't want to breed war secties like other pals, I'll tell them about a strange thing with all my beetles. They are all males. Very strange because some I caught in sanctuaries and some I bought, but they are all the same gender. I hatched the last Anubis egg and one goal was accomplished. A little later, I also had 10 menestings. Later on, I gathered all the remaining Repti Rokrist, and the last Earth Pal, for which the catching goal is not yet met, is the War Sect. So I run to the Sanctuary and catch the last specimen. Well, I've accomplished all the goals I set for this survival challenge. There are almost 10 days left until the coveted 100 days, and I'll probably sum up the last days, what I was doing and what I did. During the remaining days, I followed a cycle. I killed bosses in caves, killed bosses in sanctuaries, killed bosses on the surface. I explored caves and collected chests. Then I slept, and in the morning it all started again. I even decided to try killing strong bosses, like a level 38 mammoth, and I succeeded, even twice. At one point, I got bored with this routine, and a strange idea popped into my head to build a new base in the desert. You might ask, why do I need a base towards the end of the survival challenge? Well, I'll say, I don't know why I needed it. I just wanted to try something new. I roamed the desert in search of a relatively flat area and found something resembling a hill in the desert. When I started building, I didn't know that half of the base wouldn't work because I began construction too close to a boss's lair and structures like chests or crafting tables couldn't be built on one half of the base. But it didn't matter because I didn't plan to develop on this base. I just wanted to build the framework for something interesting. In the end, I ended up with something resembling a prison or a dilapidated castle. Still, it was interesting to work on the construction, except for the constant annoyance from poachers and wild pals who sometimes even killed me. Well, after the new base, I went and killed several more bosses and reached level 31. I unlocked a new heat source for the pals and built it at the main base. That's all the interesting news from the last few days of the challenge, and now it's time to sum up. I survived 100 days in Paul World with the main challenge of not using or capturing any pals of non-Earth type. Additionally, you could consider that I faced several other challenges, such as surviving without using flying pals, and all my world exploration was limited to the ground. I also avoided using electricity and similar mini-challenges. Here's my opinion on all of this. Since the game is still in early access, there isn't enough content to justify restricting myself with such challenges. Essentially, I just deprived myself of using most of the game's content by only playing with Earth-type pals. It can be said that no single elemental type or pals are suitable for a complete playthrough because none of them possess all the necessary skills. For example, as I mentioned, Earth-type pals lack those that can provide the base with electricity. 
At the beginning, I found it very interesting because there was a lot of novelty ahead of me. I had to think and solve tasks and puzzles to decide what to do next. Or, for example, how to achieve something that an ordinary player could accomplish in a couple of days. For instance, finding a pal with the kindling skill. An ordinary player would catch a firefox at the start, but I had to plan ahead to somehow obtain a high-level repti rope. But the further I progressed, the more routine and farming there was. And towards the end, I had nothing left to do and saw no point in continuing to play. I must mention separately that the bugs and glitches added to the difficulty, which I didn't encounter during my initial playthrough of the game. Pals would inexplicably get stuck, forcing me to re-enter the game. Pals at the base often did nothing if I wasn't standing near them. I often fell through textures and struggled to get out of them, and many other issues that I mentioned as I progressed. And the worst part was the game crashes, which greatly disrupted my plans. And of course, the main difficulty was leveling up. After all, the main way to earn experience in the game is by capturing pals. And since we have a very limited number of Earth-type pals, I couldn't level up my character much. I only reached level 31, and that was only because I killed a lot of bosses. In conclusion, I'll say that experiencing the game with such challenges can be interesting. But 100 days with these restrictions is too much. As I said, the most interesting part is at the beginning, and the further you go, the more routine it becomes. Creating this video took me over three weeks. Filming and editing consumed most of my energy and time. Therefore, I kindly ask you to subscribe to the channel and boost this video to the top with your likes and comments so that more people can see it.